Last year, the season nearly ended just as it started after Dak Prescott suffered an unfortunate boo-boo in week one. Fortunately, backup quarterback and disappointing energy drink Cooper Rush guided them through the turmoil until Dak's glorious return when they went 12-5 and and found playoff revenge against the team that nearly ended their season early, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, sending the GOAT to a second, hopefully more sticky retirement before ultimately losing to the 49ers as God intended. Welcome to Shut Up Football. I'm Jeff Staltzfus. That's Kevin. Today, we're talking about the GOAT damn Dallas Cowboys. Oh, I can feel my blood congealing from the hate now. <laughs> Could just be my diet. We've never done the Cowboys before, so it's only fair. We're going to break down every skill position player from starter to bench, how they'll do in fantasy football, and what their record might be for the season, all while talking out of our ass. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. The Cowboys haven't seen a Super Bowl since floppy disks. Could this be the year they finally stop tripping over their own dicks and get there? If they do, we're taking a bath with a toaster. This is the 2023 Dallas Cowboys. For the record, I liked Breakback Mountain. Brokeback? Breakback? What is it? It's got Cowboys. And now it's time for Breakdown. Former offensive coordinator and possible ventriloquist dummy Kellen Moore is no longer with the team. He's now with the Chargers. Brian Schottenheimer replaced him as the new OC, but head coach Mike McCarthy said he'll be the one calling the plays, which should concern the crap out of you as a Cowboys fan. The last time Mikey Mick called plays, Aaron Rodgers was his quarterback, and he did a lot of the heavy lifting. Dan Quinn is back as the defensive coordinator so you'd expect some consistency there. And John Fossil is back as the special teams coordinator. McCarthy made more changes to his staff. He's finally rid of leftovers from the Jason Garrett era, which sounds like a good thing, but also puts even more responsibility on his shoulders for this year. If you have full confidence in Mike McCarthy, this season is gonna be great for you. Here are the most notable losses from last year. Dalton Schultz went to the Texans. He had nearly 600 yards and five touchdowns last year. He's done okay for the boys, but I agree with the decision to let him walk. They also let Ezekiel Elliott go, though he's yet to sign with another team, so who knows? It's possible he hasn't taken his last bite of chunky soup in this Cowboys backfield. But again, I agree with the decision. If anything, they continued to feed him too long. Out of habit, I guess? They added corner Stephon Gilmore, receiver Brandon Cooks, and running back Ronald Jones. They were clearly missing a receiver last year. Cooks is that guy perennially underrated. He adds a lot to this team. Gilmore is a big get for their secondary, and Ronald Jones should help sure up the backfield depth. I'll get into their draft class more in depth by position, but here's a quick look. Mazzy Smith and DeMarvian Overshone were solid ads for an already good defense. Smith is a space eater in the middle of that defense and seemed like a position of need. It was a thin draft class for linebackers. If they felt like they needed to add one, they got in just before the position fell off a cliff. I really like tight end Luke Schoonmaker. To me, that was another need going into the draft, but they've got good in-house options that could allow him time to develop. It wasn't a flashy draft. If anything, it was a bit underwhelming, but it didn't reek of desperation. I thought it was quietly good. Dak Prescott injured his thumb in week one. He missed five games. Even with that, Prescott finished as the QB 18. From week 10 on, he was firmly inside the top 10 at the position. That's despite Amari Cooper moving to Paris and Ezekiel Elliott's skills playing hide and seek. When healthy, Prescott is a weekly top 10 option in fantasy. He's currently 29 years old. Cooper Rush was never thought to be some high upside backup. In fact, the Cowboys cut him prior to last season. They had no backup for a hot minute which was a choice. Then they re-signed him. Oh, you sneaky cowboys. He won four out of five games for the boys and looked competent. Actually, he kind of looked like Andy Dalton. I don't want to poo-poo the job he did, but I'm not being fooled into thinking he's some kind of hidden talent. He guided the team to some wins, but for fantasy, he was not so good. Sometimes, just not having tape on a guy is the advantage. And once they do, they get undressed. Often, that takes a season. 
but the Eagles did it in Rush's final game prior to Dak's return, where he tossed three interceptions and they made him look like a silly man. Rush re-signed with the Cowboys this offseason for, air quotes, two years and about $5 million. Will Greer is also on the roster. He was supposedly in a fight for the backup job last year. Instead, he was cut, then signed to the practice squad. I liked him coming out of college, but at this point, it sounds like he's bouncing on and off the roster. If he wants to see the field, he'd be better off joining groundskeeping. I'll take Dak Prescott in all formats. He's undervalued, perhaps because in real life, he needs adult diapers for the playoffs. But in weekly play, you've always got a possibility of rushing upside. Plus, I like his receivers better this year. Cooks was a big ad, Gallup is further from injury, and young guys like Tolbert have a year of development under them. I'll forgive a bad year of interceptions. My only real concern with him is McCarthy's conservatism or lack of innovation. It might yield shorter ceilings. A big risk, but one I'm willing to take. Cooper Rush turned out to be surprisingly capable last year from a game standpoint, but I'm not getting fooled into him for fantasy football. Even if Dak were to get injured again, I can find better backups, ones that aren't in a Mike McCarthy offense. Oh hi! It sure would be swell if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the little bell to get notified about future videos. We're currently in a race to see if we can get to 1,000 subscribers before my computer dies. I don't feel safe. Tony Pollard is finally free! Zeke's gone! It's Tony time, baby! And it's gonna be great! Last year, he had over a thousand yards, averaged 5.2 yards per carry, and had 12 touchdowns. Seven of those weeks, he had over 100 yards from scrimmage, and in week eight versus the Bears, he scored three touchdowns. He also earned 55 targets. That's 3.2 targets a game. He finished top 10 at the position, and that was while sharing a backfield with perennial soup eater and full-time tree beard, Ezekiel Elliott. The only concern with Pollard is the injury he sustained versus the 49ers in last year's playoffs. Look away, feet! He fractured his fibula and suffered a high ankle sprain. The general belief is that he'll return by the start of camp, and so far, all the evidence supports that. The Cowboys re-signed him, they let Zeke go, and they didn't bring in anybody of significance through the draft or free agency to replace him. Pollard's direct backup appears to be Malik Davis. He was an undrafted free agent last year out of Florida. He's 5'9", 202 pounds. He didn't get a lot of run last year, being third on the depth chart, but he did get his first pro touchdown, and he's shown potential in the passing game too. But how valuable will Davis be for fantasy? Does he have standalone value? With a healthy Pollard in front of him, I'd expect about five to 10 touches a game and some very inconsistent passing work, which is outside of the top 30, near names like Samaj P. Ryan, Damian Harris, and Michael Carter. Ronald Jones was signed to a one-year deal for just over a million dollars. I mention the money because their investment in him is low. That's less money than he signed for with the Chiefs last year. He only saw 17 carries there, surpassed by seventh round rookie Isaiah Pacheco. He keeps getting less money and less work. It doesn't seem like anybody wants Jones to touch the ball. He's still only 25 years old, but there are no signs of anything positive. Deuce Vaughn was drafted in the sixth round. He's undersized at 5'5", 179 pounds, and his metrics aren't anything impressive. However, his tape at Kansas is. I really like Deuce Vaughn, but I'm fading him because of his size. I'm a sizist. I ain't proud. I love his talent, but at the pro level, I'm not hedging my bets on outliers. If it's Halloween, I'm going to the house with the full-size candy bars. The last guy I'll mention here is Rico Dowdle, an undrafted free agent from 2020. He's got a great athletic profile. I liked his tape. The problem is he can't stay healthy. He's been on IR for an ankle sprain and a hip fracture. I'll take Tony Pollard in all formats. His current ADP is about 20th overall. He's been a pretty affordable and consistent ad for me in best ball. He's got the ability to break games open and have some significant peaks. Give me Malik Davis and Deep Dynasty for depth only. That's a lot of Ds. He might be worth a late round dart throw in best ball, but I'm not. I don't want Jones, Vaughn, or Dowdle in any format. CeeDee Lamb had a breakout year last year. He finished with over 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns, and was the wide receiver five in PPR leagues. Even with a new OC and improved receivers competing for targets, I expect similar numbers for Lamb this year. I have no concerns with Lamb. He's bona fide. The Texans traded Brandon Cooks to the Cowboys. 
Six of his nine seasons have resulted in over 1,000 yards. Last year was a disappointment with only 700 yards. But the Texans were in a supercharged race, face first to the NFL's basement. Cooks also missed a few games with a calf strain. He finished as the wide receiver 50. Does anybody think that's going to happen again? With Dak? His ADP doesn't. It rebounded to just outside wide receiver 30. I'm predicting just shy of 1,000 yards and putting him in the late 20s. I'm so old I remember Michael Gallup was floated as the Des Bryant replacement. It just hasn't happened. In five years, he's only topped 1,000 yards once, mostly for health reasons. He's torn his ACL, his meniscus, and had a calf strain. Finally, 100% healthy, he's still the number three option in this pass game. I can't make the case for Michael Gallup. Often injured, low investment, the only thing appealing about him is the cost. He's currently lurking around wide receiver 55. Simi Fajoko, Jalen Tolbert, and Kevante Turpin seem to be the favorites for the number four spot. Turpin's best used as a returner and gadget player. Tolbert was always a project, and I'm not sure where he's at right now. If I'm picking anybody out of this lot, it's Fajoko. He's got the size, speed, and a little draft capital invested in him. The receiving room rounds out with Jalen Brooks, a seventh round pick out of this year's draft, Dennis Houston, Dontario Drummond, Tyron Johnson, John Stevens Jr., and Jalen Moreno Cropper. CeeDee Lamb and Brandon Cooks are buys in all formats. Cooks is 29 years old, so keeping him in Dynasty does sound risky, but I still think he can reach and or outperform his ADP. So he could be one of those solid veteran pieces to augment your team with. It's not sexy, but it's solid. Cooks is one of those few guys I'm willing to sell late on in Dynasty, because he'll be undervalued until the day he's worthless. I'm not a Gallup truther. I can stomach him in best ball based on ADP, but that's about it. I'll take Fajoko in Super Deep Dynasty simply because I like his athleticism, his tape, and he's 25 years old. I'm not expecting anything out of him, but if I have room on my bench, I'll put Fajoko on it. After the Cowboys let Dalton Schultz walk, second-year man Jake Ferguson appears to be the incumbent. He was a fourth-round pick out of Wisconsin. Athletically, he profiles very similarly to Dalton Schultz. He had 19 receptions and two touchdowns in his rookie year. You could make the case that Ferguson will seamlessly replace Schultz, which at his peak in 2021 accounted for 800 yards and eight touchdowns and made him a top 10 tight end. But I don't think it's gonna be quite that simple. Though I like Ferguson, there's a lot going on in this tight end room. Peyton Hendershot was an undrafted free agent from last year, and he profiles similarly to Jake Ferguson too. Though he did test with better agility, he snagged 11 receptions and three touchdowns on his own last year. Pretty good for an undrafted third string option. The knocks against him come in pass protection and blocking, but he's not a forgotten man in this offense. He's got good hands and picks up good yardage after the catch. He compliments Ferguson, and I think the two showed enough for the Cowboys to have confidence letting Schultz leave. Luke Schoonmaker was drafted in the second. Some thought they were snaked by the Buffalo Bills who moved ahead of them to draft Dalton Kincaid. If that's the case, I like that they didn't reach for the next one available. Sam Laporta and Michael Mayer are both going to be fantastic tight ends, but it would have been a mistake to take them there. They showed patience to wait to the second round and grab Schoonmaker. Athletically, Schoonmaker profiles well. He's got the size and metrics I look for at the tight end position. He offers an upside that Ferguson and Henderson don't. What he lacks is college production. In his final two years at Michigan, he had just under 600 yards and six touchdowns. I think Schoonmaker could eventually take over as the top option here, and the draft capital would imply as much. The question is when, and I'm not confident it will come this year. The rest of the tight ends are Sean McCone, Seth Green, and Princeton Fant. I'd take Ferguson in both best ball and redraft, but stop just shy of Dynasty. He feels like their short-term answer to the position. I think they'd like Schoonmaker to be the guy long-term, which could mean a value swing between the two players with a timeline mostly dependent on Schoonmaker's development, which I'm guessing is one to two years. I wouldn't invest in Hendershot anywhere but Deep Dynasty, and the only theory there is if there's a Ferguson injury and Schoonmaker isn't where he needs to be yet, the starting tight end for Dak Prescott has value. That's a Hail Mary stash with a very small window, but if you're thin at the position, it's something to consider. I'm buying Schoonmaker and Dynasty, and that's it. Ferguson and Hendershot are firmly in his way. I don't see them rushing him onto the field. Don't get rookie-itis. Play the long game with him. Linebacker or edge, whatever your league classifies Micah Parsons as, he's elite. 
but he's not the only good option for IDP. Even at 31, Demarcus Lawrence is a fringe top 10 asset. Last year, he made over 40 tackles, including six sacks, and played in all 17 games. If you're looking for someone a little less obvious on the line, consider Edge Sam Williams. He's just a rotational guy right now, but last year, he made waves in week seven against the Lions, where he had two sacks and a forced fumble. He's only 24 years old, someone worth keeping an eye on. Rookie defensive tackle Mazzy Smith will be a popular one in Dynasty IDP. He'll see the field quickly and will no doubt help this defense in the middle. However, I'm not quick to draft him. There's plenty of D tackles with upside to go around, and none of them are gonna break the top 20 for their position as rookies. Leighton Vander Esch is back! Or maybe not, I don't know. He had more tackles than his previous three years, but still way below his rookie season. He's got potential, but invest at your own risk. DeMarvian Overshone was a third round pick out of Texas. He's got great metrics. He's a little undersized and he's been known to miss some tackles. The best thing going for him is his speed and the fact that he's playing in a Dan Quinn defense. There's some concern about his usage. Will he end up being used as a hybrid role, like a nickel corner? I'm not drafting him, but he's on my watch list. If there is a linebacker I'm interested in, it's second year man, Damone Clark. He had a red flag in his medical evaluation at the combine. They said he'd need spinal fusion surgery and likely miss all of his rookie year. He was on the field by week eight and finished the year with nearly 30 tackles and a forced fumble. If this dude is healthy, he's got potential. I'm eager to see more from him and I'm looking to sneak him onto my teams. Cornerbacks Stefan Gilmore and Trayvon Diggs finished side by side last year, just around the number 25 spot. Gilmore is new to the Cowboys. Either one should be a solid corner in fantasy. Donovan Wilson was a surprising top 10 for fantasy safeties last year. He had five interceptions and over 70 tackles. I think similar numbers are repeatable. It felt less like a fluke and more like a result of the system and the players around him. I think you can bank on Wilson again this year. So that's my prediction for the Cowboys for fantasy football. Let's take a look at their schedule and try and guess what their record will be. The first thing I'm gonna do here is mark losses for both of their games against the Eagles because I'm an Eagles fan and they can suck it. We'll also give them a loss for the bye week. You can't beat rest and relaxation, am I right? So that's 0-3, not a great start. I'll give them the Giants, Jets, and the Cardinals. Pats and Niners, I think could be tough for them. I'll split them one and one. They should be able to stand Los Angeles in both forms. I think they can take the Chargers and the Rams. Three wins in a row over the Giants again, Panthers, and whatever Washington is calling themselves that week. A bit of a gauntlet with the Seahawks, Bills, and Miami. Let's say two losses there, and then three wins to close out the season, which makes them 0-17. Oh, wait. Carry the one... 10-5? and five? That doesn't add up. If you want more football and shenanigans, join the Discord. There's a link in the description and on the main page. There's like one guy in there right now, and I'm afraid he's going to die. Nobody wants to play with me. I always forget to feed him. Please go say hi. Let me know which team I should do next. Leave your comments below. Like, subscribe, say hi to your mom for me. And we'll catch you next time. Peace. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. sound right boy oh 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 if you want more <coughs> huh? nerds my nerds